And action. Uh, just a little disclaimer with this episode, in case you hear some commotion or some noise of uh, from cars passing uh, passing by, we are at Veni Viti Vici. As you can see in the background there, that's the name of the place. I came, I saw, I conquered. It's uh, in Ibex Hill. So if you're looking for a good place to chill in Ibex Hill, this is the place to be. Uh, and we're outside, right by the road. And there's the Esther Lungu, the former first lady's uh, case happening at Ibex uh, Hill Police Station. So in case you hear any noise in the background as the episode progresses, that's what's happening. And also this episode is brought to you by Bet Lion. And uh, for those people who bet, for those who bet, this is a good option to choose. The winning odds are great with this one. As you can see, the cap I'm wearing. And speaking of the cap, you could bring yourself this combination I'm wearing here today as well. The cap and the t-shirt by simply typing Bet Lion when you hear the lion roar on this episode like we did two episodes ago. We can already hear the vehicles. Uncle Bob, mm. for the purposes of this uh, episode, are, are we calling you Uncle Bob? Bob Unkosha? Just Bob? Uncle Bob. Uncle Bob. Yeah. You know, even, even my kids call me Uncle Bob. If we have been. <laughs> no yeah. way. Yeah, I like your disclaimer oh. of the noise and all. Yeah. Because Kaida Patuli Padi case, but you didn't say in case you see stones running oh, or flying. I, know, I forgot to mention. Crew. Yes. You know, you know. There's riot police in riot gear all over uh, Ibex Hill today because of uh, the same Esther Lungo case. Uh, uh, by the time of this episode, I'm sure it will be old news, but uh, just letting you know, in case we start running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but we should have had had that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. And Uncle Bob, sorry to keep you waiting in uh, the production of this episode. I need to put the blame on Gob for this one. Bob, Gob is 30 minutes late. You've kept Uncle Bob waiting. Apologize. You're going to blame Mr. Lungo for this now. <laughs> wow. Uh -huh. One thing we've noticed is ever since he got married, uh -huh. he's been showing up late. What, what do you think changes a man, man? Yeah. When he just gets married. There's always like a, you know, that, you know, the new... In a new marriage, yeah. there's always like a thing of, baby, baby, wait. <laughs> baby, let me iron your T-shirt. Tell me in a T-shirt is, is ironed. Come to think of when it. When did you ever see me in an iron T-shirt with a pattern at the back like a spider? <laughs> <laughs> His jeans are ironed. Who irons the jeans? Eh? I think at your next stage, they mean they must sneakers with the iron. With like a crease, aka Londo, <laughs> on the Londo, jeans. On the... <laughs> So that's, it's, just, it's just that bro, women, women want to prove that there's a difference now. Yeah. This is not a guy, the same guy in you. And this is a guy now who's got someone looking after him. He's owned. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> how, how long have you been married for? Wow. Don't ever ask a man how long they have been married for like that. First and proud. I'm, 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 I'm not trying to trap you. I'm not trying to trap you. Oh, yeah. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Okay, Dude, approximately. 16 years. Uh, 16 years? Yeah. This is the 17th year. How, how, do, how do you last that long? Uh, patience, I think. Patience. And then also, you go drinking. Yes, you know, the, the, the less time you spend at home. Mm, teach us. <laughs> you know, the more you should last. There's a, there's a guy who comes to me and says to me, well, I won't say who he is because everyone mm -hmm. will know. Yeah. Um, uh, he comes to me and says, no, me, I've been in marriage for... 30 years. And I said, yes, because half of those 30 years, 15 years, you're working out of town. And you were just coming. Yeah. So there was no time for you to have a difference. <laughs> I've, been, I've been married for seven years now. Yeah. And I spend a lot of time at home. So what, what advice would you give me then to make it last? Even? How much time do you spend at home? Quite a lot. You know, I, you know I, do, I do most of my work from home, eh? Yeah, now. Yeah. Yes, now. But you spent a bit of time in Nakonde. Uh, yeah, I did a bit of time alone in the continent. They joined me, then were there for like three years. Uh -huh. Yeah. Can I make a change of environment? It helps. Yeah, it really, really helps. 
So we say one place, but I but I'm boring. But I'm paying if you. Then we have to go up there and book us. You won't be able to make a few more fin. I get yeah. it. So I get the, it. So the movement is good for a relationship. You know, sticking at one place, even just going somewhere, you mm. know, a different environment. You go in a different space. It just revitalizes the relationship. So I shouldn't spend too much time at home. Mm-hmm. I should be coming home late at least. At least find yeah, find her sleeping to figure, avoid arguments. Uh, yes, yes, yeah? yes. And then let us speak. When I get home late at 1 a.m., I'm drunk. Let her speak. Yes, let us speak. If you are going to go ask come that won't go anywhere. Let us speak. Let her vent. Finish that speaking, and then you just sleep. Then she would have won. And then when I sober up in the morning, morning with a hangover, and the hangover, I'm hungover, yeah. Then you pick up a phone mm. and call your fake friend. Adam Dala, I, I, you know, I came, my, uh, you know what happened last night? I, I only I managed to arrive, but more fresh than she was. Three o'clock. Wow. You know, I told you because you know this. this, 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 this so, man, you're not talking to the person on the phone. You're talking it's to yourself. Still, you're talking to her. You know, that's a copper belt thing. Speak loudly. Speak clearly. Uh, speak clearly. Yeah. And make make sure she's hearing the conversation, exactly, which is not even exactly. happening with anyone. Yeah, exactly. You know, yo, there's a guy. Uh-huh. Speaking of copper belt, there's a guy. You actually should know this guy uh-huh. from the copper belt. This is a guy who never used to go out much, and uh, uh-huh. when he gets married, I don't know why he decides to start drinking just when he gets married, and then uh-huh. he goes out, and then you know time elapses, and he can't. Uh-huh. He checks his time. It's like 1 a.m. Uh-huh. Afrokia bond. Uh-huh. You know what I mean. Continues drinking with the fellas. Before he knows it, it's now five, six a.m. Mm. He calls me uh. and a few other guys, uh. asking for help. Like you guys have been married for a while. How do I explain to my wife uh. where I was? I was chilling until like three, four a.m. Uh. In one of the guys' infinite wisdom, he decides, "Let's just get you arrested." So they take the guy to Kitchener <laughs> Central Police, pay a police officer, <laughs> and they get him locked up. They even rough up, rough him up a little bit, you know, like make his shirt look dirty. Uh-huh. <laughs> Had him locked up, then call the wife and say, this guy uh, was in a fight last night and uh, he, he's at Central Police. We're uh, just trying to bail him out, but uh, we are short of 1,000 kwacha. Uh, and the wife came, paid up. Uh, Imagine that. That's how creative guys can do in front of such situations. Yeah, the wife yeah, paid up, shouted yeah. at him, yeah. and the guy's walking around, his wife is shouting at him. He's been yeah. smiling at us. Like, <laughs> okay, the, the 1,000, they go back in the drink. <laughs> she paid the cop 1,000 kwacha. And that, well, that yeah, was for his services. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. But a, a good friend of mine did that once where he got stuck. Then he calls me in the morning, uh, about six years. Boy, images. What? Mm. And says, Isafi. And I just drove there yeah. where he was. He says, uh, my, I've called, my phone has been off. Eh? Yeah. I failed to go home. So now I want us to take this car to your house. They knew you dropped me home. And we say the car broke down. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, let's do that to save a marriage. Yeah. So we drove the, his car to my spe, to my place. Yeah. But we couldn't obviously drive it inside the house. You know? Mm-hmm. So um, uh, for obvious reasons. So we pushed it into the yard, parked it in the yard. Then I took, it, took him home. Oh, yeah, no. And then break down and, and everything. So he was stuck at some, at some place where he slept. So he says, ah, Ninaka. So I sleep a bit. Then I organize a mechanic mm-hmm. to come and pick it. So that's how we slept. And then around 12, he calls me. He says, oh, I've organized the mechanic. <laughs> and he was making sure I was speaking. Oh, boy, I've organized the mechanic. Speak loud. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you know I've organized. He was actually telling the wife that now I'm going to pick the, the Pick car. up the car. So, ah, uh, few, uh, about 34 minutes later, I see him coming with a taxi. Comes in. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pa gets into the car, kick, start, <laughs> boom, boom. Then I, but I was, I was just told you, please, Buana, go straight home. Go, ah. you go elsewhere. No, I prefer to, let me just pass through the playhouse and just do maybe as the mechanic is wow. fixing. <laughs> I, I, I think the ladies are now having their minds opened up a little bit more to the stories they've heard from their husband. I'm sure yeah, there's one lady watching this and thinking, we'll oh, by so the guys. that's what he was doing we'll be that sued day. by the guys. Yeah, for revealing all these stories. But the other thing is that for yeah. the ladies, always ask the guy at least four questions. Because them guys only, only prepare two questions. Mm-hmm. Two answers. No? Where were you? Ask the guys. Mm-hmm. Where were you drinking? Vini Vidivishi. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, but why are you late? 
no, because uh, the breakdown. Yeah. That's the end of the story. No, it's just because at uh, the breakdown. Now, woman must ask fourth and fifth question. You had a breakdown. Where? where? Now, you know all sorts of places, eh? Yeah. But to pinpoint where you had the breakdown. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, um, uh, 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 so a friend of mine yeah. told the wife that I had a breakdown. So the wife said, we asked him where? So this is oh, Pakona, pa, Pandeke Village, Pakona, mm-hmm. pa boxing. You know pa boxing in Deke Village? Yeah. Pa boxing. Oh, okay, okay. So, uh, a day passed. Second day, they're driving back into town with the wife. They pass pa boxing. Then the wife says, Eh, hey, apa? Get it? Apa? Apa? Lost. She lost. Apa? She lost. Apa? Eh, apa? 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 Record the lie somewhere. Somewhere. You go, you go through it and remember when you need to tell the lie. Chapo. <laughs> anyway, uh, Uncle Bob, welcome to the Z Podcast. And uh, you, you're one guest I've been trying to get on the podcast for the mm-hmm. longest time. You you, you rarely visit uh, Lusaka, but we caught up with you yesterday at Bruno yeah. City's birthday party. Yeah. And for me, especially that you've actually won this award before, or won this competition before, the, uh, uh, what was it? The original Kings of Comedy? This, it was actually Zambian, uh, stand up, stand up Zambia, King of Comedy. King of comedy, yeah. You've, you actually won that competition. But mm. before we even get to, you know, th- th- that that day, I'd, I'd like to take it back to mm-hmm. way back. Mm-hmm. Would you say you were just born this funny man, or it's something that you picked up along the way? Where, 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 where did this comedy start from? Uh, well, you know, uh, you know, I tell uh, um, you may not know what you mm. have, but people's reactions yeah. tell you who you are or what, what you're good so at. So how did you discover it in yourself? Then? I, d- I didn't know that I was funny, but I found whatever I was doing was funny. Mm. You know, like people really like at school, at um, at uh, primary school, and you know me, I went to a proper school, not did I'm a school, me I go to a school, proper private school. Which, which one is this? <laughs> the trust school. You went to Connor Trust School? Yes, I went to I went to Connor Trust School. school yes, though. I know you went to Connor ah. Trust School. And we're having an alumni this year, you know. We're doing 50 years of uh, Connor Trust Serious? Yes, absolutely. I'll be there. You must be there. I'll be there. So, um, I found myself, because at that time, a lot of Mzungus. So, to get a leading role in a play was not easy, because obviously the Mzungus will get the leading roles. Right. But I ended up always getting these funny roles, funny character roles. And they will always give me these roles. I didn't understand why. I didn't see the comedy in me. I just thought, well, I like to do this. I like to act. Right. And then, um, every time we were doing plays before the play would do sketches remember that time where you just before the main play you do a couple of sketches right which is basically comedy so we do the sketches and uh and people will always find the guys always give me the main character in the sketch and uh the crowd would always crack whenever i'm playing that character and i'm bringing out character and slowly i've started venturing into this i just realized that oh i can be i'm able to do this comedy thing right mm-hmm. and then we realize also because we reach a stage where we realize that oh Actually, uh, for for sketch comedy, realized that it was receiving more attention than the main plays. Mm. Like people would really, really laugh. Even at school, you start the main play, some of them started leaving Mm -hmm. because they just wanted to watch the sketches. I said, oh, people love comedy. Because at that time, we were doing plays like tragedy plays. Oh, Chan Chani, the cries over the window, the Chan Chani. Yeah, from 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 all those literature handbooks, yeah. (laughs) Exactly. So people didn't really, we didn't realize that people didn't want something that is sad. They wanted something that is going to make them laugh. Something that's going to stress relief them. Mm-hmm. So slowly, when we're creating Zambia One Comedy, it was an aspect of where, can we move sketch and make it the main theme of, a, of, a, of, a, of, of the day? Mm-hmm. So we first created uh, the Laughter Night at Kitilutu Theatre. Right. We were just doing sketches. And then we invited the Fiavukaya guys, when Jobek and Noah, Oh, the, the 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 radio one, the radio, yes, radio because, sketches, and, yeah, 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 because people used to listen to those, and it was funny. So when we invited them, they really brought a crowd because they were quite known. So now to come and see when uh, when uh, Jobek and when uh, Shingonga live on stage, mm. everybody was excited excited about that, and we filled the theater, right. and then we realized that comedy can sell. And did I know that it was already? 
well, I was already defined as a comedian by then because all the sketches at, 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 uh, at the theater, I was doing them and so forth. But my first wedding, it was my, my, my older brother's friend yeah. who says, look, you, my older brother was supposed to do, because my older brother is also an actor. Oh. Um, um, but he, he, he stopped when, uh, a long, long time ago. Okay. And he emceed his other friend's wedding in Chilawombwe. Mm -hmm. So the other friend also had his wedding lined up. So he, my brother couldn't make it. He says, I can't make it. And then his friend says, look, you, you are a dramatist. You can also MC. Mm. So my first wedding was actually at Impelembe Secondary School, in the school hall. And uh, this uh, Mr. Mponda is, 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 is a big boy at KCM. He says, you're going to do it, whether you like it or not. I, says, oh, I mean, almost every time I'd introduce a play, whenever we're doing a play, I'll go there, introduce the play that is coming on, or introduce the actors. So I was always there, like uh, the compare every time, introducing things and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was like easy flowing <laughs> for me. So my first gig, people laughed like no man's business. And said, Hang on. And I was paid. I said, hang on, this <laughs> can, thing can work. You know, if you I can actually you make a living beef. from this. What if you have one beef? Yeah. But that time I was a minor. Uh, I was working, the, not a minor as a youngster. But <laughs> it's not I, so I, I was about to ask. <laughs> I was working for the mine. I did mine. Because if I'm a minor, I don't forget. I yeah, because I'm mine. thinking, who, who was abusing you? You're a minor and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I was a painting in no, labor. Let's change, let's change it. I was a shmine. You're a shmine. Yeah. You're working in the mine. What, was, yeah. what, what job were you doing in the mines? Um, mechanical. Oh, you studied? Yes. Mechanical engineering? Yes. It was in mechanical fitting. Oh, wow. So I specialized in uh, hydraulics and pneumatics. You know so what? Most I, of think, I think we need to take a step back here first. <laughs> so from Nkana Trust, wh where did you do your secondary? And I, I, I went to the Nkana Trust. I went to Mukuba. Same here. Yeah. So yeah. after uh, in Mukuba, at Mukuba, I changed schools. Um, uh, grade 10. Okay. I went to Ndeke Secondary School. Right. And I think for Mukuba, because when I went to Mukuba, there was a lot of drama at Mukuba. So uh, the current ambassador to France was our teacher, uh, Miss Judy Mulenga. Uh -huh. She's our, she was our uh, teacher of English, and she was very, very much into drama. And even the deputy head was an actor, a Mr. Mm. Chunda. So the school was very drama-like, and I'm coming to this school, and I love drama, and I'm coming from mm. drama school. And, 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 luck, and as things we have it, um, it was a boys' school. So you needed female characters because it was a boys' school. So oh, naturally... Right. But you could, you could have used the, the... Remember the externals had girls? No, no, but we didn't have externals. Oh, you didn't have girls then? No, 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 no. Because no. the time I went to Mukuba in 99, uh, there were girls there. They, they, they had introduced the external But girls. the girls would only come in at uh, 13 hours. Can I tell yeah. you, in our time... Mm. When a girl passes at the school, <laughs> the whole school came to a standstill. <laughs> Girls from Helen Kaunda come for a debate yeah. session and they're just passing that in the middle of the school. You know where that's my that's in Kwa boy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are passing going to the school. Yeah. The entire school will be on the standstill wow. and there will be whistles and everything and what what. Because that time it was very rare to have a girl at a school. The only girls that we had were the teachers because they were pretty young. The teachers were pretty young. But you know what I mean? They were teachers. I, you know? I know exactly what you're and talking about. And then we had old people. Yeah. We had old guys. We had guys that were some of them I was with because that's what we did Form 1. So the guys I was with in Form 1, some of them had babies at home. Some of them, because <laughs> were Shimpundu, Joseph Simpungwe. I don't even know where that guy is. They had, the, they had twins. While, while in high school? While in high school. <laughs> in grade 8 now, you know? They had twins. And uh, one of them, Basa Basenda, Pabamo Basa Basenda, Badi Basi Bukombe. So we had that kind of thing. And I mean, look, I'm coming from a trust school. I'm yeah. basically 12 years old. And I'm in the same class with these big boys. Mm. And uh, they were coming from Mindolo, some Chimwemwe, and so forth. Because, you know, they took a long time in grade seven those days, you know, grade seven, maybe four or five years in grade seven. You know, to an extent where I'm going to grade seven, Kombo Kwita Wait Master Dwoy. You become workmates, <laughs> rather than it. But I, I, I remember those days very, very well. Mukuba, uh, Hel getting excited about Helen Kaunda girls, and we would always knock off. Mm. Well, we would knock off and always go to Helen Kaunda just, just to see girls. Just to see. Not to go in, but did, just Did you ever have a girlfriend at Helen Kaunda? No, 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 no. How come? I, I, I thought it was like I, the norm for Mukuba girls, to, Mukuba to, to, boys to no, pick no, up no, Helen girls. Yeah. Mindolo. So you would trek the other direction? Yes. To, you would pick up girls from there? Yeah. But, wow. but, 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 but for our time, it was more of the township way. Because I lived in Tuvukisha. Oh, and right. by the way, I went to school with Matete. Samu Matete, Samu yes. Matete. Yeah. We live in the same compound in Tuvukisha township. A small little township. 
but it produced me and Matete. Matete is a world champion, the only world champion that we yeah. have. You know, like yeah. as in yeah. the only world champion that we have in gold medalist, small little town. Yeah. Yeah. And the sad thing I'll tell you, uh, Karenga, is that that town, the sports facilities there, mm. there are no grounds for play. There are no playgrounds. Yeah, but then ZCCM would take care of a lot of you know, yes, sports you know facilities back in the day. The council so. gave out the land. When ZCCM sold the houses, yeah. the council gave out, gave out the land. So where we were playing soccer, where we were having fun as kids, mm-hmm. there's a church there. Where we were uh, playing, uh, we actually even used to play golf. I played golf in grade eight, yeah. As, as in our own, we used to go to golf club, we get my golf sticks. My By the kind of golf club. Competitive golf. No, no, but not in Ghana golf club. We made a golf pitch. Wow. Competitive. And there was even money being put on it in mm-hmm. terms of the best mm-hmm. player. I think a best player, we had a, a friend of mine called Evans Mushikwa. Because his father was really good at anything. He even made the plane, actually. He made the plane. That's the only guy. That guy, that man was some, something else. He was working for the mines. Yeah. And he made that plane and it, we saw it. Lift off. Lift off. Lift off. He made that plane and it, we saw it. Lift off. Lift off. But it didn't go far out. Yeah. Then it came down. And he, because he always started about projects, if it works, as long as it doesn't go anywhere, no, because the process of airspace, what, what. Yeah, as long yeah, as yeah. I, yeah. And that's it. And no one tapped into that talent. So this is a small t- township that had a lot of talent. You must have been very popular with the girls in this township because I know how girls love a guy who can make oh, yeah. them laugh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to mention names, but yeah. But, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, she, but she, that's you, a good Give thing. us one. Give us one. Ah, uh, come on. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think that's also something a positive for me because, mm-hmm. you know, fame, you don't just start cooking. Now, yeah. Banga Kodimbo are famous. Yeah. You start little by little. That's why you find a lot of stars. I mean, I've lasted this long because we didn't start the stardom at the top. Mm. We started from school, Parapen Pasku, Nawakwishiva, Mukomboni. You know, where they started, the way that you Kangarina, where that Avena Karenga. You know, like if you are the chief, if you are the. The, the, the star player in the, the, in the football, the whole group will be called Arena Kalinga. Yeah. So yeah. Arena Bob and mm. so forth. You know? So I played soccer within the same uh, township. I also played soccer at school. At, at primary school, I was a goalkeeper. And then at college, I was a team captain and I was a striker. So I changed. You know? And ha- have you noticed how he's going around the issue of how popular it was with the girls? <laughs> Okay, let me tell you this. Oh, we're, so, we're building up to it. Yes. Okay. So, it was easy for the girls to notice me. Right. They'll come and watch soccer. My girls are watching soccer and you play the best you can. And then also, you're coming from the trust school. So you can speak proper English speaking in fear. the hood. Yeah. Actually, but with me and my friend, uh, they're actually the owner of Synergy, uh, Matthew Mwanza. Yeah. We were, and a uh, late friend of ours. We're walking, we were just like speaking in English and so forth. Wow, 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 wow. Ah, this woman just going and going and told Matthew Manza's mother that these kids have been insulting me <laughs> in English. <laughs> but she couldn't understand anything, yeah. Because we were like um, the most wanted boys who are coming from the trust school, you know, or yeah. the kids, the privileged kids that are coming from the trust school. We're speaking well, and then also, not only that, you're also doing uh, soccer or sport. And then you're in drama and you're making the girls laugh. So mm. naturally, you're an attraction. At school, I was you, a director you, you were the of drama. Pimp. Like you were the, the pimp of, of the school. Ah, squad, the colored chick, you say. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not the celebrities of now. now Speaking <laughs> of colored chicks, what's up with... I don't know if it's a copper belt thing or it's a kitway thing. When somebody has money, despite... <laughs> them being married, <laughs> they all feel the need. Well, most, let me not say all. Uh, a lot of k- people in Kitwe feel the need to marry a colored chick when they start having money. What's, what's up with that? It's, it's, and I know you would agree with me. Yeah, that happens no, a lot. I definitely, of, yeah. I definitely agree with you because it sounds like an achievement. To get a colored chick. Yes. You know, in our time, the, the people that used to make fights, create fights mm-hmm. with colored boys from the colored quarters. Mm-hmm. They were the crazy boys. They make the fights. But now, the people that are creating the fights now are the colored girls. Because the guys are fighting, <laughs> fighting amongst the colored girls, uh-huh. and they don't. And, they, and you know what it is? They don't really care who she was dating before, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's just probably a like prestige. Pepe no msungu, you know. Especially now we get to know we know we know it's sungu. So pepe no msungu. I think it's just probably a sign of achievement. It's like buying a big car. 
buying a Land Cruiser, buying a, you know, like an achievement, even if you don't really need it. So basically what you're saying is the first wife is who you marry because that's who you can afford at, the, at, mm, at, at that mm, point. Mm. And then when you have money, you now get the chick that you really want. Have you seen the basketball wives mm. in America? Yeah, well, pretty much the same, it's, it's kind the same of phenomenon. Same phenomena, yeah. yeah. Because they've got the money and then it becomes a show off. It's like, like I can now get the pretty girl, I've got the money. So. Exactly. Yeah, if but presidents then, who had an opportunity, they would do that. <laughs> 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 but then again, you, you, you can't really predict the future. So you, yeah. you don't know if you're going to have money or not. So you yeah. marry whoever is available with the financial yeah. status you're in at that particular moment. Yeah. Because you, see, and then, you start seeing yeah. Yeah, that, that person accepted you the way you were before you were who yeah. you are now. Yeah, and then now you start seeing her being inferior because now you got because money. Because now you got money, and then the kind of people that you're inviting, the kind of places that you're going to, you know, you can't go with the yeah, yeah. You know, like like there's a, there's a lady who was married to this man. They were, okay, they were married when the the man was was maybe was a, a non commissioned soldier, mm -hmm. so just married an ordinary chick, Fidiam Kombon. Yeah. Then he had an opportunity to cross over to be an officer. But no improvement. So when they made the house, visitors come at in the fridge. So the doors. So there are those aspects of yeah. you know, you also need to move the floor. Probably what I would tell the women is the wives is that. You can get married at this level mm -hmm. where she does not work, she's not working on the education, not so much. But when you grow, when the husband is growing, also grow with him. Mm. Appreciate the right. level. Because the, the, the guy would be uh, studying, the woman won't be studying because she's a housewife. Mm. So now, in an event where you have these big dignitaries coming into the house, you won't even know how to serve them, you won't even know how to do mm. this, or you don't even know how to put things properly in the house and so forth. Because it, it demands a little certain level of skill and or education. Yeah. And exposure. Yes. Because yeah. there's some women who just want to stay at home. Yeah, true. Because if you're not, if you're gonna watch Telemundo, get, get some ideas of the way they've set up. Not uh, if you do not my The house is looking disorganized. I've been doing that one a long time, man. Doily. Those are the ones that they cover the hair with the camera. Hair on the sofas. On the sofas, yeah. God, I hope you're not doing that in your home, bro. Please don't. But look at his his jeans. It looks like a doily. What's my patches? So you know that you women must grow with them. But now, now things are turned around. It's the guy that is remaining behind. Mm -hmm. So the women, there are women out there that are marrying a guy for the sake of marrying a guy. You know, like, oh, it's a great education, but I need somebody. And then she becomes... Just for status in society, yeah. so that can be seen as a married woman and not be respected yeah, as a married woman. And then woman. she becomes the managing director of a bank. Mm. Changes and the then she whole... has to go with this guy. Yeah. And this guy is Munguru, especially these guys, that the, the ladies that are marrying youngsters. Yeah. You know, where it's just a boy and is what, what, eh? She, she's okay at that particular time. And then she gets a limelight. Then she becomes a minister. And then this time you were looking at the hubby and said, ah, eh, <laughs> 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 She might be okay with it. <laughs> she might be okay with it. You know, she might be okay with this, but it's about where are you going and where is your partner going? It's about carrying your partner with you. And it's also about the partner knowing or... Um, wanting to go with you. So spouses out there, whether male or female, don't stick, don't stay at the same space. Move with your body. This episode is serious marriage counseling. God. You, should, you should have had this, these lessons before okay, you got you, married, bro. Okay. Do you feel you married the right woman though? Very much so. Very much so. Ah, great. Man. That's why great it was stuff. late. That's why it was late. If it was the wrong woman, it would have you been, been zero five. Zero five. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been here waiting for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uncle so, Bob. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm found with you so much. I've just realized how little I know of you. We've yeah. done so many events I together. Agree. You you MC our DJ, so many weddings on the Copper Belt, Lusaka, all yeah. over the place. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to know this side of you, man. It's like, a different side. It's, it's a different side, yeah, true. So in contrast, you do Mukuba, you go to Ndeke, then uh, I didn't even know you did mechanical. What do, what do you study again? Mechanical fitting. What, what do you do that fitting. That's, What do you do that from? It's, it's, yeah, I, I, I did it um, under sponsorship with the mines. So we had the right. manpower planning and development school, mm -hmm. trade school. 
for the mines. So we were going, we had a, a program called, it was an Australian program. Right. And um, it was supposed to be, when we went, it was supposed to be a dipl diploma course. But remember those times, the only people that would give a diploma and a degree was government institutions. Mm. So our school was, was, was rated as a private institution. So, uh, but our course was still a three-year course and uh, we did a lot of practical. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's probably why I'm hands on because it was a, we, we, we dubbed it the kangaroo program because all our lecturers and instructors Australian, had to go to Australia to, yeah. to be trained, to come and train us specific for specific parts of the mines. Because right now I can, I can fix a, tub, a turbine. Thingy. A like, wind turbine. You can yeah. fix that. Yes. That, wow. uh, that precision measurement, that's the most difficult thing, part of engineering. But we did practical. Not even Wait, a, what, what do you mean it's the most difficult? Precision. Because you, you measure in thousands. You know, a thousand. Thousand. Thousands. Thousands. Yes. So the smallest, smallest like measurement, mm. using the micrometer and. Um, no, you don't even use a vernier caliper. You're going to use a micrometer for certain measurements. The vernier caliper, yes, you can use it for the distances in between those right. those, those fins and so forth. Even um, even pumps, I, I did pumps. And also I, went, I, went, I, went, I worked underground and my speciality was uh, hydro, uh, hydraulics. I said hydraulics and pneumatics, but I did mm -hmm. a lot of pneumatics underground. Actually changed a whole system, a whole braking system from a locomotive because I found there was a problem. And I said, Heesh. This system is just making a, a problem. So I removed and redesigned the Which, which, which mine was this? Mindolo Shaft. Oh, yeah. Up to now, they appreciate I came, I went there to Mindolo Shaft and I found the guys were fixing a, a locomotive, underground locomotive, the yeah. electrical motor uh, mo locomotives. Mm -hmm. They were taking, like, if they've got a breakdown, it would take the whole night and probably finish at around seven. Mm. If you say the breakdown is at 15, yeah. they'll work up until uh, probably seven o'clock. That's when they finish and put it on the line. But when I went there, because the fact is, I was a dramatist and I mm. wanted to go, if it's Saturday, I want to go to the theater. Oh. Stay, I want to go for rehearsals. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to go with this hopeless arrangement. I was, I was going to say, S -W -W -T. But, <laughs> uh, but I would. You can say shit. Thing, it's, it's a podcast. It's, it's a podcast. You can say so shit. Say, I'm it's not, not radio. Get, yeah, yeah, good, good. So I'm now free. Uh -huh. I said, I'm not going to go with this bullshit of getting overtime. Thank you. Like yeah. get working overtime. And that was a norm at the mines. So I designed an aspect where a locomotive breakdown is brought into the workshop automatically using a, a winch, which, which was uh, operated by air. So I'd fix the winches, get the locomotive in, and fix within four hours, the locomotive must go back onto the line. Mm. I was not popular with the uh, other guys because then I know you are. You are. So, so I'll simply say, I finish, I'll, I'll, log, I'll go home. The other guys remain underground. So now you waste him, but they're they not releasing it because mm. they're accumulating hours. Yeah. But that was not me. So I'd go, and then when they read the hours, they would include me on the number of hours yeah. that had been worked. Yeah. But that's who I was at the mines in terms of uh, engineering and uh, what we stri what we what we were striving, while yeah. trying, trying to achieve. And that time we were not accepted as members of the engineering sort of Zambia because. That time it was very segregative. It only appreciated members who were degree holders. Oh. But actually, the guys who were hands on were the trade school guys and um, the technical guys, the technicians, and so forth. So now they do, they, anyone who's engineering based can go into uh, a member of AIZ. So that's where we're coming from. So you quit that job to get into comedy full time. Yeah. At what point do you then decide, you know what, F the job, F the mines? I want to do this full time. I quit now. work at 31. I retired at 31. 31? Yes. No, you didn't retire. You quit that job and got into another job. I retired. You retired from, <laughs> you resigned from the mines. You're still working, you're a young man. I put up, I mean, you. there are people that are still working. Mm -hmm. that, that retired from the bank, doing another one. Some of them are PSAs, some of them are ministers. <laughs> but mm -hmm. they retired at some point. Okay. So for me at 31, I said, well, enough is enough. I've done what my dad wanted me to be. Mm -hmm to get a job for the mines because my dad worked for the mines, my mom worked for the mines. So to get a job for the mines, to get an education and did. there was no training for, for the arts then. There was no training for drama, comedy, whatever. It's made, made by Fueve and it trained by when we in a bush mechanic kind of arrangement. Mm. So at 31, I said, I'm going, at, I'm going to try it out. It was rough. The beginning was rough. The beginning was rough. I had uh, kids to look after. How many? Three. Wow. At 31? I, yes. You were fast, eh? Why, why are you waiting? I'm not going to be like this, 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 this old man here who gets married at 45. 
<laughs> God, how, how old are you? 27. Uh, he's also early. Ah, I got married at 32. You think. went late. Yeah, I got married at 32. You went late. Look, the point is, when are you seeing your first grandson or Grace's first grandchild? You're oh, and, and we were talking about your grandson last yeah, night. Yes, yeah. you're going to be 17 for your birth, the time you have a <laughs> So, what 31, else? you've got three kids, you leave the Man mind that you get into comedy, yeah. and it doesn't kick off immediately now, does it? No, no. It doesn't kick off immediately, but mm. you, it's, it's about being there and mm. being consistent. Look, Karenga, you've been consistent with what you've been doing. Right. It's not that it's been plain sailing. No. For you to reach a level of having a radio station, mm -hmm. it's not been easy. It's not just been plug and play. No. You went through rough times where you even do a gig and you're industry. not paid. <laughs> We've been through a lot of those. <laughs> but somebody, somebody's waiting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then probably you were delaying to marry because you were not so sure whether you're going to do it or not, whether you're going to be have the capacity I, to look I, after. I didn't want, to, exactly. I didn't want to marry and then I can't give. Yeah. I, I love pretty things. Exactly. And I love pretty women. And then, you yeah. know, pretty women don't come cheap. They don't come cheap. Then you, Salamu, first of all, and the maintenance. You can't, you're not going to put her in a and compound. And also, you like to show off. So exactly. You know. <laughs> exactly. I want to be in a public place with a pretty woman. You know what I mean? Exactly. Elson is finally here. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? You want to yeah. be in a public place with a pretty woman, and you're not going to take that pretty woman to a compound after chilling in a nice place. You know what I mean? Nelson just get married as well. Elson will never get married. <laughs> <laughs> Elson, you can, you can join us. We just started. <laughs> you can join us. Uh, He's in Just shorts. Nick. He's in shorts. He's always in shorts. What do you mean? Uh, he's not married. He's a senior in Kongurumi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, so you were saying, yeah. So basically, it's decision, life is about decision making. Yeah. And I made a decision at 31, but I know there are people out there that are still looking for a job at 31. You know? Yeah. Someone at 35 looking for a job, uh, pushing government to give them a job. But mm. I think sometimes you just go out and say, let me go work. I, I get amazed some people that have got like six points at grade 12, mm -hmm. going to school, engineering school, come out and say government is not giving jobs, there are no jobs around. And I'm asking, why the fuck did you get all that in education for? He's, he's loosening up. Are you, you seeing know, that? You know, An you know, F word, finally. Yeah, you know, Fidia, <laughs> why are you going to get yeah. all that education? Because, you know, when you're going to do mechanical engineering or medicine, whatever it is, you've attained an education. It's up to you to apply it. It's to you to apply. It doesn't mean that just because Karenga is a DJ, is because he's a DJ, it's easy for him to apply. He mm. collected the, for the, the knowledge from an academy. He collected from a radio station. You're right. And he collected all this knowledge. Plus the years of experience. Years of experience, yeah. how to run a radio station, and everything. And then you're applying it. So why am I going to be a six-pointer at grade 12 and sit at home and say, I'm waiting for a job. I have to apply for a job. Or I'm a teacher. Quick, for crying out loud, you're a teacher. And you're sitting waiting for a government to, lead, to, put, to give the list of 30,000 employees? Mm. You're a teacher. Everybody wants to be taught. There are people out there with kids that need to be taught. Mm. There are people out there with kids that need tuition. Start a tuition center at home or something. Exactly. Yeah. Don't sit back and wait for something to be handed on silver platter. Because if you were, wait, were to wait for someone to give you money and start a radio station, no, 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 I'll, I'll still be at my or mom's even house. Alone. I'll still be at my mom's house. Exactly. Uncle Bob. Let's talk more about your comedy now. That, that's what you're known for the world over. I mean, you've yeah. traveled the world to do comedy. You've, mm. I, I've seen you do shows in America, Europe, yep. Australia, mm. all over Africa. Mm. Before we get to your exploits, who, who, all of us, you know, mm. emulate someone when I get starting in the, in, in the industry. Who was like your inspiration? Flip Wilson. Who? Flip Wilson. Who the F is that? <laughs> <laughs> Where is an old guy? He's, he's an American comedian. Yeah. Uh, he, he was among the first comedians that did a show. It was some, one of the first black comedians who did a full show on TV. Uh, it was called the Flip Wilson Show. Mm. And um, we had the privilege of having this show uh, on ZNBC. And um, this is like the icon of comedy right. in America. Flip Wilson. I've never heard of this guy. Google. You know and Flip Wilson? I also never heard of Flip Wilson. Okay. I think we're too young for this yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you got to do it. You know, these things, you say, flip. in the next 20 years, you're going to say. What the uh, flip? You're going to say, who's Gesh Groove? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Come, come think of it. You've been interviewed by a youngster we, we are, when you're uh, 70 years old. <laughs> I, was, I, was in, I was inspired by Gesh Groove. Yeah. Him, you know? We but actually Flip we actually got that a lot because mm. two episodes ago we had Gesh Groove and we actually had a lot of those yeah. 
yeah. questions yeah. being asked on the, in the yeah. comment section of the, Yesterday of the post. Yesterday I met P-Funk. I have no idea who that is as well. Uh-huh, you see, this is one of the greatest DJs ever in the country. Like P-Funk was P-Funk. Those guys were doing their, their Valentinos, the what those days. Those big Studio 22, those are the big boys. Space right. Kid, uh, the P-Funk. We had uh, Eddie Groove. These guys were fantastic. All right. So Flip Wilson? Flip Wilson was doing a, sh- a show in, uh, on, on TV. And from the age of about 12, I always wanted to be Flip Wilson. Can mm. I tell you that I started uh, creating Dorica at the age of 13? What? At the age of 13. It only came to fruition at, at probably... I was why why does the country eight. think that Dorica was actually inspired by Madea? No, no, no. Or Robin Wills, uh, Williams, what's this? Uh, All those came after Dorica. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Do you remember? Um, Sims Philip Wilson was a crossdresser. No, no, that's what they would put it like that. It says Philip like, Wilson was a crossdresser. No, no. Yeah, but he, he does crossdressing as well. Exactly. If, he with his other character, character, yeah. Yes, he created yeah. a character called uh, Geraldine Brown. Mm. So that inspired me to say, because that time I was at Mukua, remember? Yes. And I was doing female characters. I played Nandi in Shaka. I played also the characters. And um, uh, this man. You know, Laksan and Tani? Yeah. Laksan and Tani was playing my mother in most of the plays that we're doing at Mukua. Mm. And because I was doing so many of the female characters, I got the know how. Because obviously I was pretty, man. I was, I, was, I was that handsome, man. And all the guys, remember I told you about the guys that we were with at Mukua? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is on. The yeah. guys were with at Mukuba. Yeah. So do, do you think Ben is also doing like a female character or do you think that's him? No, no, ben no. That's his way of life. <laughs> that's his way of life. There's a difference between the an actor life. and uh, a person that has assumed that characteristic. Yeah. Because I can play a, a, a part of a cop or, uh, or a thief. doesn't make me a thief. But if I'm a thief in real life, mm. that's I'm a thief. So uh, for Ben, Ben, that's his way of life. That's his way of life. That is, Ben will go around. So he's always, in, he's always in character. But he's, he's always, always in, in character. character. Exactly. So he'll go around in makeup. But I won't do that because there's... And he's talking, about, why, he's talking about being pregnant now, yeah? It, you know, <laughs> well, I, I've, Who's I've talking about being pregnant? Ben Bombe. The fuck? Yeah, yeah. But I've always prayed for him to have fibroids. <laughs> 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 but wait, he wants to be pregnant? He is. I've, I've been seeing posts of... He's been making of late saying uh, I'm pregnant or whatever. Oh, maybe I'm mistaken. But Ben is. He has it. Ben will be Ben. Yeah. Maybe just bloated. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Now he's got fibroids. (laughs) But I'll tell you that um, that's the difference. Like, when we talk about Dorica, you say, what has happened to Dorica? You're not talking about. Like, she's another person. Like, even Mm. in my house, Dorica is an individual. You know? There's two different people. It's two different characters mm. and uh, two different, even the stuff, even my wife know that this is Dorica's wardrobe. This is Dorica's stuff. Mm. You, know, you, know, you understand? I would not, you would not catch me doing anything feminine when I'm not on stage. Wait, hold on, stop. Dorica is your alter ego. Yes. Some, well, another character he created, yeah. Yeah. Wait, sit back. I want to look at this man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is for your comedy routine? Yeah. So does Dorica ever come out in the bedroom? As like a, when you're having sex with your wife and then no, Dorica no, like... It's not me. It's, 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 it's not me. I'm not being Dorica. But do you tap into something to like bring Dorica out? Is there like something in your life that you tap into? That, that's, where the, that, that's where the history comes from. That the history I of what? played characters. I played female characters mm. when I was a boy's school. So naturally, I grew into doing this more often and, and, and got the gist of playing uh, female characters. So for me, it's a, there's another character I play of the Indian, Mr. Patel. Yeah. Yeah, I play that character as well, but doesn't make me Indian. And doesn't make me become Patel when I'm with Indians. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, so yeah. my question is, how, how then do you tap into that character? What's your... What's your, what's your, do you tap into something in your life? You know how certain people, when they want to mm, mm. get into character, they, they are those method actors mm. who they are that character mm. for the duration. If they're mm-hmm. shooting a movie, for example, yeah. and the movie is a month long, yeah, they don't movie. get out of character mm-hmm. for that period. It's, it's one of the so most dangerous... So can you switch it on? Can you switch it off? Yeah, there's one of the most dangerous type, types of acting, the method acting, because then you're getting into your character and sometimes people go cuckoo with that. Mm. Uh, you really, really have to be a professional to, be, to do method acting. And for me, it's an aspect of there's a five-step rule 
of five steps before I enter stage, I become the character. Five steps after the stage, I become myself. So you know what happens to me? Five steps off the stage, my, pa- my feet become, start paining because of the high heels. On stage, I can dance, I can move, and feel uh, in, in Bemba, even, even at, at yeah. Awira, your spirit, uh, there's a spirit that has come in, onto you, right? Mm. Like um, you've seen musicians go on stage and just become somebody else. Yeah. So I basically become somebody else when I'm playing that character. And it's, you know what? One thing amazing is the first time I saw myself uh, recorded as Dorica, mm. then I saw some of the movements that I don't plan for. And I said, oh my God, that's so feminine. You know what mm. I mean? Eh? Because I'm so much into the character, I don't realize that I'm going, I'm going like, it's not like, oh, now I'm going to do this. It just comes automatically because I'm already in that character. So five steps off the stage. You're out again. I'm always in pain. My, my, my boots are paining. I have to take them immediately off. I can't walk three, four steps. I'll be all wobbly. But five steps onto the stage, I become that character and that's it. Wait, so you even had the name when you were 13? You had no, the no, name no, already, no, no, no. the, the Dorica name. We actually experimented on the names. The, actually, the name Dorica was given to the character by Augustine. Augustine Lungu. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first name I put was Sister Oga Fufu. When we did the, the baby and the Kalulu thing, yeah. uh, as if you're stupid. Oh, uh, yeah. You take the baby. And, that was way before Medea. That was way before Robin Williams. That was, I think, 90 something. Uh, yeah. No, no, I think yeah. 2000. I remember, I remember that yeah. one. Yeah. At, the, at the Ngoma Awards. Yeah. So that was the first time I tried the character. And then after that, from that sketch, then after that, we started doing something with Zambia One and we started doing a, a, like a pageant. So there was, um, uh, what's John Moa was doing a character called, we shall even forgotten, but even uh, uh, Limbani, BJ was also creating a female character. But I think of all the female characters that we BJ created- BJ did a female character. Yes. The fuck? Dorica, that, 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 Kadedisha, uh, Monica, Monica, Monica Kadedisha. Do they like wear that. dresses that big? Do they make dresses that big? <laughs> <laughs> do, do, you know, do, you, do you know who walked away from $60 million because mm-hmm. they told him to wear a dress? Mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle? Yes. Did you know this, Kalinga? I remember that, yeah. I just didn't yeah, remember the name. Yeah. Because, you know, Dave Chappelle came up with the Chappelle show. Yes. Yeah. And then he sold it to uh, Comedy Central. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And slowly he began losing his rights to, to being a own. creative. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and in one of the scenes, one of the characters, they, they, they told him that he's going to wear a dress. Mm. I said, I'm going to do that. Mm. They offered him $60 million and he still walked away. That's the time that he went to, to South Africa on a mm. hiatus and then he came back. Mm, mm. It's incredible how people, when they have got a certain set... Yeah, morals well, and like, values look, they don't. Um, you won't catch uh, Denzel mm. doing sex sins, things oh, yeah, like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, so he has sex, actually. Yeah, but now that those days you wouldn't wouldn't do it. Uh, but, the, what's this movie? Where is the pilot? Flight. 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 Oh yeah, it starts with him with a girl in the room. Yeah, yeah. the white chick, naked. Yeah. yeah, but but it's not really sex. She's just getting out of bed in this in a movie. But. They just had sex and then she's, yeah, she's getting just out. getting out of bed. They're not yeah, having sex. Yeah. No, never, 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 never. A full sex scene. Physical. Yeah. Um, damn, deep, deep, you know what I mean? So there are certain Maybe things. Maybe you can't that, get it uh, out. Like, uh, I'll give an <laughs> Sometimes with, uh, like, there are comedians who are not actors, but are turned to be actors along the way. Mm. Uh, they're stand up comedians. So most of the stand up comedians, like even Chris Rock and him, were basically just stand up comedians. They didn't be, they, they only became actors later on. Right. Yeah, yeah, Bernie Mac. Yes. Yeah. So they only became actors later on. Um, uh, and it's because of the popularity. They say, oh, this guy is so good. Let's bring him here. And then there's, there's acting training. So probably Dave would have been that kind of comedian for us where like, I'm only Dave. I'm not any other character. Or he could have rece- refused the dress because he didn't want to create another character away from Dave Chappelle. Mm. So it's like, if I'm told we... But I'm doing the Dorica show, and then they say, look, we're going to now create another character of you, but I want to maintain my brand. Right. So he could have wanted to maintain his brand as Dave Chappelle, because that, that other female character would have been a different brand altogether. Would you so have a sex scene? But, but if it's mm-hmm. a, would you have a sex scene? No ways. Why not? I'm too... If there's a guy human. who walks away from money, <laughs> Dave Chappelle, though. You say, you say what? I'm too human. You're too human to, to do a sex scene? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's... But don't you, don't you feel like everybody's got a price? Like, if they offer you the right amount of money, you'd, you'd consider sex it? Sex and no. It doesn't you matter know, how much they, it, they it, offer you. You know, you know it's, a, it's an aspect. It doesn't matter how much they offer you because it's also an aspect. I can never say never because also it depends on the situation. <laughs> they are, or the amount. Or, or the amount. I mean, it's a situation, but yeah. it's an aspect of... There's an aspect of culture and tradition. 
in our country. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll give you an example. I was doing a sitcom uh, called Sita, where I'm looking for Indian characters. And I would tell you that Indians in Zambia are more Indian than the Indians in India. So the value of tradition sort of supersedes what you're going to do. Like mm. if I'm going to go on stage or if I'm, if I'm told um, you, won't, you won't catch me probably doing a, a political party kind of thing, political, politics and so forth. Eh? Because I, that's, my, that's me. I'm not going to do that. Even if I've got a belief or I've got a stand that I'm on this side or I'm on the left, I'm on the right, but I won't go and mix it with my, my performance. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's my stand. He has a question. Oh yeah, so I've got a, I've got a question. Mm-hmm. Um, to what extent uh, do you think, or rather, do you draw a line to a point whereby you playing a female character, mm-hmm. you're encouraging the, the gay community? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, to what to, to what point can you clarify that? Because most people get motivated by what they see. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so yeah. That's so it's so <laughs> to to add on to that, actually answer it. Okay. It's basically an understanding. If you're living in an environment where people do not understand what you're doing, the people that have said, no, it's, it's, it's cross-dressing, it's a, what's the word that they use in America? It's a um, uh, drag. You're a drag queen. Yeah. I think C- CQ, CQ, the musician, mm-hmm. said that one time on his Facebook, and I was doing a show in America, and he says, CQ says, you're, you're going to go and watch a drag queen, you know? And, well... I, 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 don't, I wanted to get offended. Then I realized that, no, his level of education does not permit him to understand <laughs> what acting <laughs> is and what, <laughs> what playing a role is. Not CQ, sorry. Wow. Is it? No, no, not CQ. Um, what's I, was about to, I was about no, to be no, very not short. CQ, not so yeah. CQ. The guy was in the States. Um, OC. OC, OC. Sorry, CQ. Sorry, well. CQ. You're my man, CQ. Don't worry. Sorry, sorry. But OC, and I realized that he didn't understand. He didn't understand. And it's not, it's not his fault that is ignorant about the fact that I'm an actor playing a role. Mm. If you tell me that um, the guys that are playing mafia movies are encouraging people to become mafias, it's entertainment. It's about how a, man, how a person defines or interprets that entertainment. Right. You know, you can come here, like um, you can dress in a particular way when you're performing, okay? Like most performing artists, the, the mumpies and all, they dress in a particular way when they're, act, when they're performing. Mm. If you copy that and you go and dress the same way in public and you are booed at, but you, you don't understand that this guy, this person is a performance, is performing and that is costume. It may not be her day-to-day dressing. Mm-hmm. But when she's in public doing a performance, she'll dress like that. But when you meet Mampi in the street, she's got a chitenge and what, what, dressed like a woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's certain things that you cannot stop people from taking the negative out of a positive. So it's a character that I play. Uh, I'm not a drug queen. There's, uh, there's, uh, the, the, you know, Doctor Jose, this comedian. Guy. Yeah, he's, he's always in that Congo thing, yes, thing of yes, his. Yes. But he's always hammering at me. Yeah. At one time, he says uh, I'm gay. But you know what? One answer I give people say, no, you must be gay. I says, bring your mother. I'm assured you're going to have a younger brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, here's the other thing. Uh, to sort of answer the question that that mm-hmm. Gob asked. Mm-hmm. My dad smokes, mm-hmm. or my uncle smoke. Mm-hmm. Not any amount of smoking that I saw on television ever made me want to put a lit cigarette mm-hmm. to my mouth. Mm-hmm. If you are going to be swayed mm. to be gay mm. because of what you've seen on TV, you're already gay. Yeah. There isn't any amount of uh, Cross dressing uh-huh. or whatever it is that would turn mm. you gay. That little mm-hmm. switch mm-hmm. inside. Just Do you get what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You were looking for an excuse. You were, you gay. already were. You're yeah. looking for someone, some, someone, or something to blame. That's it. Yeah. You already were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah true. Now, now you just have got a scapegoat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and depending on the age, because then some parents would be like, no, but then if our kids see this and I've said this. On this here podcast. It's not our job to raise your kids. It's not our job to raise our kids. It's your job to parent and you being a lazy parent. If you want TV to raise your kid for Mm, you. mm. If your child is exposed to something and they ask questions, the uncomfortable questions. Mm. Now you're saying, oh, now Bob is making my kids ask me these. Yeah, that's your job as a parent. Exactly. Now have that Mm. conversation with them. Mm. What do you have for breakfast today? 
Um, <laughs> I went to three trees. I had uh, the business. What, am I hyper? No, you're making sense today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, actually, I was, I've been speaking too much English. Yeah. Hey, let me tell no, you. You're, you're making you, all the sense today. Let me tell you the craziest thing that happens. So I walk into Zamtel uh, and I'm at the reception uh, and Sui Lanji comes out and was like, hey, are you here to deliver suits? Uh, you don't get the joke, huh? Uh-uh. What, because you wore a suit on Sunday? Mm, because my suit, the pur- again... The purple suit. Because, oh, again, it started trending. <laughs> thanks to Kandayatu. I'm like, funny, man. <laughs> But ah. that's it. But but uh, but that's it. Like like you said, it's a, it's an aspect of hey, only an idiot can be swayed mm. into thinking I can be John Cena. Yeah. Youngsters who see it, that's why there's always disclaimers. That's why you're gonna say no. This is these are trained people. Mm. They're doing this because of their training. I have I have had these people, and you know that it was not difficult. I mean, it was not easy. To do Dorica at the time I started doing it. Because a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, you know, I lost a lot of opportunity to advertise. Because some of the managers would think we're associating with ourselves with the, the gay drug, community. The gay, the gay community or drug kind of thing. But when they look at the, com- the comedy and they look at it, but it, this is acting. Yeah. Because at one time I asked, you remember that time I had, I had a problem with, uh, with the church, in other church? I put on a um, uh, Dirk had a, a oh uniform. yeah yeah the red and the blue the, the, yes. the, the black uniforms they, yes. they wear yeah and they were all up no what this is it and for, well, the, the only thing is that at the time they started the noise it was just a day after I performed I, I left for the states I was doing some shows in the right. states so the whole everything was going on I was in the states mm. and uh, one and I was I was watching it on face on on social media on Facebook right and. I didn't answer because me when I, whenever there's anything about me, I won't answer. I will let the people argue and debate it. And the, the question that were coming that how come you're okay to watch um, Big Mama? My dear. My dear. Yes. Even Big Mama as in, uh, what's his name? Martin Lawrence. Ma- yeah. Martin Lawrence. Yeah. You're Martin so okay with that. And then you, we had, um, then they're talking about the uniform. Then someone says, but sister act. Yeah. They're in uniform. They're not, they're not sisters, but they're in uniform. And they're doing comedy. Mm-hmm. So what's wrong with that? So why are we so against our own? Because even this, whatever you do, someone else will watch a podcast from, up, from outside. Mm-hmm. The minute you say something, you because you're Zambian, they say, no, but you watch what? But they're enjoying something similar from, from another, from another, from us. Drink I champs. think we have this weakness of, we only appreciate something that is foreign. Yeah. I mean, even it, even even the political world would rather have a foreign investor than a <laughs> than a local one. Than a local yeah, but one. you know the old saying: no one is ever a prophet in their, in their own, own land. land. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, so we you, need to start appreciating the fact that we have to appreciate ourselves. We have to. Appreciate, he says you're a comedian. Mm-hmm. He says you're a comedian. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been that funny so far. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, we're getting to know him. We're getting to know was, him. Was, was it funny earlier? No, it's, not, it's not a stand-up show. This yeah, man will exactly. crack your ribs Doesn't when matter. he's on stage. That is where when, B, had when BJ came, bro, I was rolling on the fucking floor. <laughs> <laughs> because it does for free. <laughs> because it does for free. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's also, it's an aspect of also, when are you going to be comedian? Mm. Like, when I go home, I'm Isn't daddy. it natural though? No, no. Isn't it, it just in it's, you? It's, it's, it's a job. It's, it's something that is natural, but it's a job. So when I go home, I knock off. Mm. I'm not going to be at home. I'm a comedian and everything. I can crack a joke or two in a normal way, like a normal guy and any other person. But I'm not going to do a stand-up, sh- uh, stand-up set. I think in your defense, home. what you should say is there's a reason why you won on Mnet, uh-huh. the king of comedy. Yes. That was what? Southern Africa or just Zambia? Just Zambia. Just Zambia, yeah. yeah. At one time, I was fourth in the, in the, in the continent, on the continent. Yeah. Fourth what? Best comedian? Fourth, yeah, Best fourth, comedian yeah. on the continent. Ah, oh, that's true. And, and, and he was number one in Zambia. Was that, what, Mnet, was, that, was that Dorica? No, no. Just Bob. Bob. And yeah. those were hard, man. Tell us about how hard it is to put, you know, your material together for hey, stand-up. Is it just me? But every time that he mentioned Dorica, I'm thinking of Dora Celia. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's just you. It's just you. <laughs> she, it's, how hard it's, is it putting material together? First and foremost, yeah. the beginning was tough. Because then you, for international circuit, you need to do it in English. 
But it was making and sense. And you're thinking in your local language. Exactly. Yeah. It's easier for the Americans to do their comedy because they're doing it in their local language. Yeah. The, the Nigerians can do the comedy because English is, a, is like a local language. It's not a normal English, you know? Mm. But for us... It's, it's a pigeon, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For us, it's not our first language. So the comedy then was a bit difficult because I could only relate to things that I was doing in, in, in vernacular, mm. you know? So when I went out, when I did my first uh, outing, uh, we did a show in, 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 in Nigeria... Uh, but, uh, through Mnet, yeah. So it was Basket Mouth and uh, Julia's. Th- this was after you won. Yes, this is after the, the I Kings won. of yes. Comedy. Yes, competition. So Julia's uh, Basket Mouth, and I brought the house down. Serious? You know, I brought the house down. Did a show in Uganda, which they still talk about when they were at the comedy show there, mm. and um, the, the same competition. So after the competition, we were to perform. So our projects, comedian from South Africa, performed. And then I also performed as a comedian from Zambia. Brought the house down. Brought the house down like there was like 700 people in the auditorium. Mm. I, we, went, we did uh, another show in uh, Nairobi and also in Mombasa for, for TV. That's Kenya, Kalika. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kenya and... Uh, yeah, what is it? I said, I, said, I said Nairobi. Yeah, for Nairobi No, no, Kenya. no, he did not complete college. Oh. So he's oh. got a learning disability. So when you say something, <laughs> oh, 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 you know, like okay, a special okay, kid. Okay, you know okay, how, like, okay. on a special kid, you have to <laughs> yeah, speak, yeah, yeah, yeah. speak slowly, <laughs> speak loudly, speak yeah. clearly. Yeah, I'm his translator. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that's Kenya. So, yeah. Okay. So basically, just do some t- subtitles. Yes. There you easy. go. Subtitles. That'll, that'll be perfect, bro. <laughs> yeah. And the voiceover as well, just to explain everything's already explained. You know what I mean? So actually, that was, it yeah. was really, really tough. Uh, I was invited for a night of 10,000 laughters, but I couldn't go. So I was like jump packed with events locally mm. and they were not paying. But it's a big, big, that's a big show in Ghana. Big comedy show, African comedy show in Ghana. In, in the capital of Ghana is Accra. Okay. Yeah. I would have never guessed, bro. <laughs> never. Mm-mm. What? Second week of college, they taught that. What? Yeah. <laughs> you did geography in college, bro. Imagine that. Uh. In IT. Your IT, was very, your IT was very special. Well, they, they taught you <laughs> where in the world you need to know where <laughs> to, go to make money. <laughs> Google Maps. <laughs> anyway, you're saying, yeah? Yeah. So it was, it was really, really tough. And especially breaking into the international community mm. uh, sector is pretty, pretty tough. Like right now, as comedians, Zambian comedians, we're still performing for Zambians. We're I was about to say the same thing too. Yeah, we're still performing for Zambians. Even when I went to the UK, I was performing for Zambian crowd. But, but we had the largest crowd like ever for an independence gig. We're like 800 people in an 800 venue and no one could be let in. And those guys are serious, eh? Mm. Anyone who comes out, then they'll replace for someone who's got a ticket outside. If mm. someone wants to buy a ticket. So the one on the venue will say, it's 800, you've sold 800 tickets, no one else is coming in. And this was one of the biggest uh, shows I've had outside the country. The next one was uh, the one we had in uh, Texas. Mm. And Bululu in Texas, you know that thing at Dukushan, the tipping. Yeah, he is a norm there. I was doing Dorica. I mean, there, there's oil money there. I was so. doing Dorica. I was coming off stage mm. with about two thousand dollars in my bra. It was all wet with sweat, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like in my change room, I was like taking off my bra. There was like dollars all over the place. Yeah, they would just throw money onto you, and 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 just besides what you're getting as your actor's fee, or, or a performance fee. So about but putting the material together, it's not easy. You, when you struggle, if you sit in a room and create material, mm. you're going to create the wrong things. You're going to pick material from what you're seeing, what you're hearing, so that people can relate. Because when you're in the room, in your own room, you yeah. won't know what Kalinga is able to relate to. So if I see something that is happening, because a comedian basically just makes you aware of something that you already know. So if you say, oh, by the way, you know, like if I tell you about how I live with my wife, mm. you relate with it. Yeah. And you see the comedy. He can't. It. Oh, he, he can't, can't relate. relate. I cannot relate. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. He will relate. His house, just him and his roaches. And no, my roaches, yeah. No, he's, ro- he's and, lived, and in, rats, the, no. he's lived in a house where there's a wife. My mom? Yeah. So there's some But she wasn't my wife. <laughs> <laughs> but you still relate. You know? You still it's relate. That that kind of like, oh, that's why Bali did that. Oh, that's why this, this, this. So that's why that, you know? So there's certain things that you just have to make. Just basically what you see, mm. I will see deeper. That's right. the talent of a comedian. How, how, Other than, how long have you been married, Bob? 17 years. 17 years. How many kids? I lost count. You got that many? Yeah. Same wife? I had, Same I had, woman? I had, I had three kids when I was, I, was, I was three kids. By 31. By 31, I had three kids. 
I married at 23. I was independent from home at 18. I mean, at 17, I finished school. I went into college. 18, and that was the end. I never went back to my mom's place or my dad's place. Um, from 18, college, finished, get a house, part, 23 years old, marry, have children, you know? So so all, so all the army of kids you have, is it the same woman or like? No, no, no. Different I chicks? Ma- I was married before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So how old is your first? Yeah. You don't remember? <laughs> <laughs> Twenty eight. Twenty eight. bad. Somewhere around twenty eight. Yeah, somewhere around twenty eight. How do you know? Yeah, huh? you know him because no, he's, he's, he's somewhere around twenty eight. Yeah, because yeah. he knows my kid. Listen, pay attention. He, he, Join us on this no, show, bro. It's a really know, good show. He, before he said yeah. twenty eight, you say twenty eight. No, no, he, he knows said twenty eight. You no, know, I said twenty eight. Then he yeah. says, "Yeah, that's yeah. about, about." Yeah. So, well, so does it ever get to a point where your kids are ridiculed because of Dorica? No. Or they're made fun of? No. Are they in Zambia? At the first, at, at, at the beginning, my son was getting irritated with it. Because mm. all of them, no, that's Dorica's son, that's Dorica's son. <laughs> so attention, it's not, it's more of, a, of the attention than, than the bullying. So it's just basically the attention of, that's your dad? Kind of thing. And everybody wants to know who you are and so forth. But when he grew older, he realized he could get a chick out of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let me good. leverage this. Yeah, let me use it for my own for uh, my good. Uh. So I've never had any of my kids come in to complain that I was bullied because of what you do. Is, but, that, is that Bob who'd get girls from your family? No, no, that's Clarence now. Uh, so is it Bob smaller. or is it Richard? Huh? Your name. Is it Bob or is it Richard? It's Bob. It's Bob. Bob, just Bob. Oh, Robert, Bobby. you mean Robert? No, 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 Robert, Robert. Sorry, not Richard. No, no, yeah, not Robert. It's You're Bob. Robert. No, I'm Bobby. You're Bobby. Yeah. Valentino. Like Bobby East. Is, yeah, yeah. So I'm Bobby, but um, at some stage it just ended up being Bob. Hmm. Yeah. And I was named after. This is irony. Is that I was named after Bobby East, my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> was, and you know what? Actually, when I was growing up, I was called Chomba West. My, oh, wow. my, 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 my Zambian name is Chomba. Yeah. So it's called Chomba West. Because I was, my, my mom and dad were not living together. So I was living in Kana West and go to Tubukishe. So to define me, my friends in Tubukishe would call me because I was coming from Kana West. Mm. So it's called Chomba West. So basically Bobby West. <laughs> you know what I mean? cool if you're Bobby West, actually. <laughs> you, know, eh? you know, that's when I saw that Bobby, he said, this is funny. <laughs> but, but the only I was talking about is I was named after my uncle, mm-hmm. Uncle Bob. Who was named after my grandfather's boss, Bona Bob? A white guy. A white guy. I hate and when my, people do that. And man. my grandfather's boss was doing the exact job I went to do when I joined the mines. Names of power. Exactly. So watch out how I you really name. hate when you find a Give kid your with child the, the name funny... Bellon Bellove. <laughs> 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 so what, what you name your child after? Who you name I your child really after? I really hate when it's I find so a amazing. guy with a funny Russian name and you ask him and he says, no, I was named after my dad's boss who this, came from Russia. There's a guy. There's you a, never find a Russian guy naming his child Chomba in Russia. Nah, nah, you know nah, what nah, I mean? Nah, yeah. <laughs> this a, really pisses a, me off, man. There's a, there's, a, there's a colleague of mine. Okay, he's my, my older brother's friend. He's called, he's Francis, Francis um, uh, Chewe Boad. And the Chewe was named after his uncle. Mm-hmm. Right? And then in his uh, later years, he found himself loving to cook. At home, he would cook this, do, do like a dinner. Shan, shan, shan. So, so then when the mother went, he says, ah, hey, wait, the mother's not okay. Pick out. Yeah. Yeah. A machine hire. <laughs> then you realize that yeah. the uncle he was named after was a cook. Oh, wow. <laughs> so now, do you understand, Kalenga, why people name their kids after their bosses? Because their bosses are more money. They want to be about money, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that one time we seated with my uncle and then my, 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 my nephew, my uncle's grandson, mm. comes and asks him, says, oh, so who named you Bob? He says, oh, my, my dad's boss named, named me Bob. He says, your dad's boss? Your, your, your dad's boss came and named you. Who does that? <laughs> Who gets the boss to come and name a child? Mm. Were you even suspicious that maybe you are not your, 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 <laughs> your father's father. son? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, because look at it this way. I, this, I mean, there are, those, there are those nights when your boss gives you, uh, makes you work overtime. Yeah. But, but I'd like children... to introduce you to Bowman Lusambo. <laughs> <laughs> what, what has he done now? <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. crap! Yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> but but you know there are times I've, I've had situations where my workers have named their kids after my kids. So yeah, Bo- Bowman work- named his kids after his boss. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, but it's not a boss that name. Ed, Edgar and Esther, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Bob man. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's a boy man. But uh, imagine in future that boy becomes a president. Imagine that. That would be the f- funniest oh, it'll be, full it'll circle be, it'll story ever, man. interesting to know what kind of president he becomes. Mm. That'll be the, that'll be another issue, yeah. yeah. But, but, story for see, another day. but, but then, then again, you know what would be interesting is mm. now by then DEC <laughs> and ACC already have a playbook. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, oh, in, a, uh, in the past government would have been in trouble for that sentence. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, and I'm not commenting. Because <laughs> I can come back. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's how you name, who you name, and sometimes, yeah. sometimes too much stuff, and you name someone, because I remember when I, t- when I was naming my one of my kids, uh, in fact, Clarence himself, mm-hmm. but I, was naming, I wanted to name him after my dad, but his, his, his middle name is in Kosh, actually. Right. So I didn't know my, my, my dad's name is. Uh, you forgot your dad's name. <laughs> he never uses it. So I asked my mom. Says, "What's my dad's middle name?" Okay. Mm. And because he had, he had these nicknames because he used to play soccer, so he played for Kana actually. Right. Yeah. So he had these nicknames: uh, Different Baker. You know these German guys. German yeah, so. Beckenbauer. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when I asked what's his name was, so he gave me and I wanted to name my son. He says, "No, no, 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 no." The person I was named after was a bad person. <laughs> he was a pimp? No, no, he was a bad person as in as in witchcraft bad. Oh wow. You know? Not was Michael Jackson bad. bad. Not, not Michael Jackson bad, but <laughs> was a bad person as in as in witchcraft bad. So he says, don't, 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 don't. Because his name was dropped. So he's never used his his name his given name for let, let me tell you, let me tell you the the funniest thing ever. So this old man that I know. Lives in the villages, mm. like deep in the villages, like mm. hot villages. Mm. You know what I mean? They cook by the fire. Mm. So he would name his kids these really long English compli- oh, those are the Lungu people. These really long English complicated names. Mm-hmm. Someone was asked, like, bruh, you got five kids and none of us in the village can pronounce your kids' names. Mm-hmm. The fuck is up? Then he said, let me tell you something. When a witch comes and I want to bewitch my kids, mm-hmm. they have to say the name to bewitch my child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. So if I name them something that they can pronounce, guess who's not being bewitched? Yeah, exactly. So I, 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 can, I can imagine this this Gob. this uh, this Ndoshi coming at the house mm. with the aim of of bewitching bewitching the child. Yeah. Who's got different baker? Then he comes. Hey, di- <laughs> Do we have a Malama anyway? <laughs> Who's the nearest Malama? Or, or Nelson? You know? or, 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 a, or a Bob, one syllable. Uh, uh, yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> Chapo, you know. Yeah. Oh, so crap. at the end of the day, it's 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 about sometimes the names affect the child. I was asking about I was asking about how difficult it is hey, to put so much police presence. D- did you drive through there? Esther mm. Lungo is there, so. Where? The, the former first lady by, 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 by Ibex. Police. Yeah. yeah. Sheesh, oh. man. There's a possibility. I was reading on the news earlier that there's a possibility she could be arrested. So. Did you drive through there when you were yeah, coming yeah, from yeah. there? Yeah, I, 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 I drove. You drove spot. through there yeah, too, right? Yeah. And, and guess who I saw, like, just blocking the traffic and being a menace? Iris. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm like, fam, I've got Bob to rush to. The fuck is this with your big titties? Move out the way. What are we doing here? Yeah. Uncle Bob, I was asking yeah. about how difficult it is to make content because, I mean, I've known you for so many years, right? Mm-hmm. And so have many people. Mm-hmm. And I've heard a lot of whispers of people talking about how you are cycling, recycling a lot of content of late. Mm-hmm. Why were people whispering is about that? Is that Kalinga? deliberate? Why were people whispering about that to you? I'm, I'm talking about rumors spreading. Mm-hmm. Gossip. Why, why, why are they so comfortable gossiping no, about no. Bob to it's you? It's so, so low for the place. Bro. I'm joking. I'm playing with you. <laughs> Jesus. Can you imagine? You can you imagine Lionel Richie being called here to come and perform? Mm. What's the What's the song that's gonna sing? Hello, Lionel Richie. Yes, it's me, Lionel Richie. Yeah, let's go song. What, hey, Richie? Isn't that fucking Adele that you just sang right now? No, no, no. That's that's uh, the original. No, 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 it's, it's a different life. song. He starts with Hello. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but, it, but Adele picked the that hello. actual oh, yeah. from, that, Lionel from, Richie. from Lionel Richie. Yeah. But the only one that I know by Lionel Richie is, uh, they call it Love. Mm. Yeah, there's the Call It Love. There's, um, 
dancing on the ceiling, there's all night long and so forth. Lionel Richie has so, hello, is it me you're looking for? Stuck on you? No, look, I'm not that old. Uh, right. So you what, I'm simply the saying, same age. what I'm simply saying is that there are times where you like, you want to do new material, you do new material. Right. And I mean, a lot of people are feeling particular... like they're recycling the same material over exactly. and over. Yeah. So here is uh, a 50 year old, 60 year old guy who says, I want Bob to come. Mm. There's a reason why they want Bob to come. Here is a party, and they say, we want Kalenga to come and play music. What is, not, what is Kalenga best known for? Jay-Z. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if you go and play Bob Marley, they're going to say, well, it's a new song, but it's not. It's not what we know you for. It's not what we know you for. Right. And number of times there's demand where you say, please, I want that. I want my dad to listen to. You know what people don't understand is that at a show, at any given time, the largest audience I've ever had was at Mlungushi, I mean, the um, uh, government complex with about 1,250 mm. people. That is a small amount of people, sm a small number of people that is coming to a performance to watch the performance. Mm -hmm. When you go to an event, like probably the one we had last night, you find 80% of those people have never even watched me live. Right. We don't take it for granted that everybody knows you mm. and everybody knows what you do. So there are people that will come in and obviously I'm, get, I'm at the gate, my name is Bob Mkosha and I, expect, and, and I should expect the guy to know me. I shouldn't. I should give a benefit of the doubt that maybe he's, this guy's never heard of me. Maybe he's never, if, if he says, oh yeah, and says, okay, cool. Yeah, like my friend, he grew up in Belgium, so he wouldn't, exactly. this, this you guy see, here. You so you don't take it for granted that whatever you're doing, and you know material is expensive, content mm. is expensive. What are you watching on multi-choice, on whatever uh, TV programming that we have? You have the repeat programs of uh, old movies. You're still watching uh, uh, Rambo. You're still watching all that thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, because of the value of content, when I go to a gig, I won't release new material. Like uh, I'll probably Just have loosely. 10%. Just Okay. The new gig, I have 10% of new material. Try it there, <coughs> pa, 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 and so forth. Eh? But the rest of it, I'll do what I've, what I've done before. And besides, and believe me, I always tell comedian, it's safer to do what you've done before on a, on a professional stage. It mm. sounds like mm. you're living in your shadow. Mm -hmm. Similar to what you've just said, because Eminem's biggest hit was um, Lose Yourself. Lose Yourself. <clears throat> and people know him for that. Mm. Uh, that's what he should or would most likely repeat uh, because he cannot match the energy or he can't live up to no, that. No, so it kind of really. sounds like you're chasing no, your no, own not shadow. Really. Not really. Look, <coughs> if... if Eminem made a huge bang with that particular song, mm. right? And you'd call him for a concert. That song has to be on the playlist. That song has to be on the playlist. Are you going to be okay with it that it's not, it's not sung? Because there are people that may know that song, but may not know his new, new stuff. So what we're simply saying is that you can have old stuff on your playlist, but it may not be 100% old stuff. It may not be 100%. Mm. I, said, I said, I only introduced maybe at the most 20% new stuff. And after uh, that 20% new stuff, and then I'll have a, a good 10, 15% of on the spot kind of comedy. Like I'll give an example of last night. Mm -hmm. The speaker comes and says, look, I was with uh, Munagwagwa. Oh yeah, he I, spoke I about at the inauguration. At the we were together, together, yeah. and, and we were together at school. He was coming from Mumbwa and I was coming from Chongwe. And I went on stage and said, oh, it's good to know that uh, the Zimbabwean president is a Mumbwa Mumbwa. <laughs> so it's a sport. I see what you did there, yeah. Yeah. So it's on a sport kind of comedy mm -hmm. where you're thinking right there and then, because Mumba Mumba, probably you wouldn't know uh, what, what, what was referred to Mumba Mumba as a guy coming from Mumba and coming into Lusaka looking more like very village yeah. kind of, you know? So, oh, like Kim, like, okay, like Timba comes to town type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. So <clears throat> at that particular show, I segment, I'll say, look, 20% new stuff, 10, 15% must come on the sport. And then the rest, I'll, I can do some old stuff. But then again, you don't do the old. You, you know, you know what a joke does. Mm. How many times I've watched Mr. Bean? It's fresh. Yeah. If you do it well, you can take my joke, go and crack, crack it somewhere else. I mean, I was still, I was still cracking last night, and I've known you for fifteen years. Yeah. yeah. You can take my joke, crack it. Somebody else will crack it. It won't be as funny. Right. You know, it's always about delivery. Yep. And I hate when I go to a, an event and I hear a comedian doing your jokes. The most annoying thing ever. Yeah. Look, take it, take, it, take it from me. You're a DJ, right? Yeah. And you do oldies. But it's not been the same to call another guy to come and play oldies. But it's the same music. But the way you arrange it, mm. the way you present it is You've very, taken very different. You've your time to prepare How that. How many people are doing podcasts? Lots. Lots. Yeah. 
get another set of people to come and sit here, it won't be the same. Because yeah. it's, it's original. It's original. People it's understand original that I actually deliberately got a stool for Elson because of his height. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's a short guy. Up? <laughs> He's a short guy, so I got a stool for him. Your face is short. <laughs> yeah, so at the end of the day, yes, we do, we, we do some odd stuff. I mean, if I'm going to invite JK, I want him to do Kaja Kagero or whatever it is mm. on, on his performance. Mm. Yes, one to three songs. Like that, yeah. And sometimes people don't really uh, take in the new stuff. I'll see. I'll see. A lot of youngsters are giving themselves a lot of pressure because they want each and every show to have 100 new new material. Mm. Content is expensive. <clears throat> content. I repeat, content is expensive. You can't afford to have hundred sets a year. And even an album, even music. I've seen musicians trying to do an album every year, an album every year, and it, it comes. It, the quality just goes lower and yeah. lower and lower and lower. It's not easy to be creative. It's not easy to create a joke. It's not easy to create a set. After the time, most, most of my sets are like 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes and so forth. Eh? But it's not easy to create that 15 minutes and have people crack every other second. Mm. Because I've got to have punchlines in every, each and every space. Yeah. If I'm going to create comedy where I start talking, 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 then bang, you laugh. Talking, 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 then bang, you laugh. That's a comedy that is out there now where you have to wait for the for, for the, the, the punchline after five minutes after five minutes but for me it's a, I'm a stand-up comedian my punchlines have to come even from the from the time I start telling the story my punchline have to be like this so it's laughter after laughter after laughter and it's not easy to do that believe me if there's anything <coughs> that's difficult to do is is writing comedy yeah you know you know what's funny is um I was watching Dave Chappelle mm-hmm. with what you're saying about punchlines mm-hmm. right he's so good and has been doing it so long mm-hmm. he writes his jokes backwards mm-hmm. Here's what I mean oh, by that. Oh, kitchen the pussy, that one. He says the punchline first, uh-huh. right? Then he tells you the story. Then he then tells you the story. Uh-huh. And by the time that he then says the punchline, he's you already, already given know, you context. You, 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 you already I mean, know right? the punchline. Now you're like, oh, shit. You, you already know the punchline, yeah. right? So now exactly. he builds up and he gives you context. Exactly. Ah, that one so, cracked me up. The one that kicked, kicked, kicked yeah, the pussy. <laughs> so I kicked her in the pussy. Just to, just maybe just to yeah. also add on that. How many sets have you seen... Uh, Trevor do in the past uh, 15 years. Well, by sets like different types of... Um, they are different types of sets as in as in performance. Or, or, like original... Yeah. Like quite a lot, actually. No, 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 not that many. You know what happens? You do a set and like you said about um, uh, Dave Chappelle losing his uh, uh, creative rights and so forth, eh? Right. You get to a level where you someone else is writing your material and you're basically performing okay mm-hmm. and you're adding value to the to the written material so you can have a little bit of uh, the the comedy believe me you i'll tell you that most of what we see as fresh comedy is actually something that has been done by somebody else and then improved maybe you never didn't hear about it and people seem to look at it as fresh right you know i mean you look like, at it like you and flip wilson yeah. yeah yeah exactly you look at it as fresh i can get i can go to google and find a comedian that you don't know and i punch it and I come and punch it and say, Pop is very, very good. No, yeah, he did this, but yeah. it's not original. Even the music right now, I mean, you've seen a lot of music that has been stolen. There's a, there's a program, uh, there, uh, I think it comes, it's an, it's an, uh, I think it's an online program where you just Amazon people that have uh, getting material from another song. I mean, Chan, 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 I Wad think Wad. every artist has been sued for biting somewhere. Yeah, Even Jay Z yeah. and all his originality, exactly, the beat you know, was sampled from somewhere. From somebody else. There's also yeah. a lot of sampling. But when you're, when you're original, it's not easy to stay original. For 30 years of performance. Yeah. And have punches and punches and punches and punches. I'll tell you who I really find funny out of South Africa is Loiso Gola. Oh, that guy's good. I know he's like, he's, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah. Loiso and Poor Pops, jeez, man. No, but Poor yeah. Pops is number one. Just ah, by looking at his that. face, there's a lot. That's what I wanted to say that there are people uh, like Jomo Amusin Jomali. Yeah. The people that ah, you Jomar don't used to have kill to me, hear man. him say anything. Nah, Jomar used you to just kill have me all the time. Look at him. He looks funny. Just and, 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 and I also used to say that, you know, I'm not fortunate with a funny face, but there are people that are fortunate with a funny face. Uh, they don't have to say they don't have to say anything to him. For you. He'll just come and just probably just take a bottle of water and drink it and just clear his throat and everybody's cracking. And Kalenga's yeah. got a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard the term you've got a face only a mother, a mother could love? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but in pop-ups, yeah. you know, even when I watch his podcast, I think for me, ish, 
The, the some, most entertaining thing about that podcast for me is just the way he starts his intro. Oh, He's yeah. just his facials. He will yeah. not say anything funny, yeah. but you just start laughing exactly. by how he looks. Exactly. The other thing is that like we're doing off cuff here, right? Yeah. But most of these uh, 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 televised materials are written. Mm. We don't really, we've not really invested in scripting. Remember I tell you that in this country of ours, there's no art school. Everybody's bush mechanic. Don't tell me you went to school to learn what you're doing now. No. You pick it up, you pick it up, you pick yeah. it up, you watch other people doing, you know, you don't get the techniques, you don't know, you don't get the techniques to know how best can you do this, how, how, how well can you do this, how do you write a script for radio, how do you write a script for, for, for TV, how do you write, um, I, I've never gone to script school, I've never gone to film school, I've never gone to comedy school. I pick it, I watch, I look at it, and I and I build on that. And you've got shows on Zambezi Magic, like exactly. it, it's raining. So, and yeah. I'm competing with guys that have gone to film school, they've gone to wherever and wherever and so forth eh, to produce for, for the platform. All our productions now, it's only now that maybe technically we're having people that are specific with cameras and stuff like that. Mm. Eh? But we're still a little behind somewhere, maybe in the scripting, because we don't really have schools for scripting locally. Now you can do online courses and things like that or mm. go abroad and learn. But in our time, it wasn't heard of. It's a new phenomenon. In the, the creative man. industry is a new phenomenon in this country. Man, I've, I've learned so much in this episode, man. Yeah. Anything else, anything else you want to... Nope. Uncle Bob, <clears throat> is there anything else that uh, you sort of hoped we're going to ask you but haven't touched on on this episode? My, I think my, my take last, on social last media... Name again? Is Bob who? Bob Nkosha. 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 Your take on social media. Yes. Tell us social about media. that. Yeah. See, we, we Especially the comedians it. who come from there and then want to do stage. That too. It's not easy. Mm. I've, I've had a lot of comedians coming to <coughs> me and says, Uncle Bob, I've, I've, I've got this following. And I've got a demand to go and perform, to do a show, to do a, a function. And I can't. And um, there's also another aspect of where, because someone is a social commentator mm -hmm. and says something funny, is taken to be a comedian. Mm. Now, being a comedian is a profession. Doesn't mean that if Kalinga most important cracks, is a talent. Uh, uh, cracks a few jokes yeah. whilst he's doing his podcast, then he's a comedian. Doesn't mean that if someone is online on social media and does a couple of uh, funny things or funny things or displays funny things that are going on, doesn't make them a comedian. So a comedian is a profession that you need to know how to do it and you have to do it professionally. People always ask this is, where, 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 what is a comedian? Like, what is a complete comedian? Mm. My aim has always been to, have a, to be a complete comedian. So I'm waiting until I do a, my animated product, uh, production. But so far, I've done my stand-up. I've done my sitcom. I've, got, I've done my comedy series. Um, Mr. Bean did that comedy series. He does fantastic stand-up comedy. Mm. But now he's done that com uh, the animated series. You're complete. You've done all the aspects of, of, of comedy. And for me, for me, that's that's my. That's the next fact, thing. If anything, the one thing I wanted to do was animation. Are you working on that right now? Yeah, I, uh, that was my first love was animation. <coughs> I almost went to to UCLA to do animation, oh, wow. sponsored by government. Then the government changed, and you know how it is. The usual the nonsense. Changed, yeah, that yeah. one is an idiot. Whatever he did was idiotic. So we're throwing everything into the into into the garden or into the bush. So are you, are you working on any animations? Yes, right I now? am. I am. I'm, I'm actually looking to do an animated series of Dorica. So if, oh. if we saw our last Dorica series, we had a bit of animation there, like the, the beginning, the montage. So that was like basically the, the idea that we're trying to push. So, yeah. So our studio is up and running in, on a copper belt. The same one in Kalushi. The one, yeah, the one yeah. I came to and you took, took me around. Yes. By okay. the time, was it, was it done by the time? Well, there was a proper looking reception. There was a hall which was supposed to be yes, like yes, uh, yes, yes. studio space. Yeah, so we're space. done. Yeah, we're done. Yeah. We're done. We've state of the art in terms of equipment, mm. uh, but we still, obviously, we're still doing up and, and cleaning up here. We've got all the props that we need. Even if you want to do a cook show, you can do it. We've got the stoves, the fridges, the wad, the chairs, the wad, wad, wad. And Everybody. Kept, all my last show, everything we built, mm. the whole sets we built inside the studio. Nice, man. Mm. Come up. It's been really great having you. Two uncles, yeah. two uncles on one episode. Uncle Bob, Uncle Elson. My name God is Kate right. <laughs> uh, To the next episode. Thanks a lot to Bedline for the support. Yeah. And also to you, who's always liking and subscribing. And we need you to click subscribe. Every episode, we're having more than 15, 20,000 people uh, watching but not subscribing. It would be nice for you to click on that subscribe button because, I mean, mm -hmm. the more numbers we, we get. It's growing, actually. Actually, we did. Mm -hmm. Facebook as well has grown like 3,000 yeah. in a week. 
We still need to grow. Yeah. So it'd be nice if well, we... Well, I think part of it was because of um, Let's Suck at July. <laughs> yeah, that too. Why are you laughing at my pain? <laughs> hmm? What part of the game is this? I've actually been defending you and your oh, pain. Oh, have you? Yeah, I have. To who? I'll show you the comments. Wait. Mm. Like, I'll show you on Facebook. On Facebook? Yeah, on Facebook. Like, they would come to you no. or like no, different just, posts? Just different posts. People post and I... Wow, okay. Yeah. To the next episode. Have a lovely day. Tan 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 tan